verse 1 to 2. Psalm 144, verse 1 to 2. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. By my loving kindness and my fortress, my heart tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the militariness of his training. Militariness of his training. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness. Thank you for your divine presence here this morning. For what you have determined right from the beginning of age to pass across to your children. May you please, Lord, this morning, make me a partaker of these blessings. As you are releasing your blessing unto your children, let no one be left out today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You take control of this atmosphere. Take control of this line where people pay attention to hear from you what you have for them. Let every hour today be filled with peace. Let every hour today be healed. Let your hand be heavy upon every soul today that stand here to listen to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. All right. I hope you guys are paying attention. I really want everyone to pay maximum attention right now. Hallelujah. Maximum attention. If anything want to distract you right by your side, make sure you let those things go right now. Because God is about to do what, you're, what you have never heard of before. God is about to do something excellently far above your thinking, above your imagination. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for the Lord today? Yes, Amen. All right. The militariness of his training. Now, I write this message this morning I to clarify the reason for this message. All right. I have so much been equipped in the past with miracle walking presence of god such uh, as being our rock we often have messages that tell us about god's loving kindness we've had many years about the fortressness of god we've had about uh, god being our strong tower we've had about god being our shield We've heard about God being our refuge. Most messages are positive and motivational towards this area. We've heard about God being our defender. We've heard about God being so much uh, into helping us to achieve our goal in life. But one thing we've not talked about that much is about God's rigorous training. He must make all his children pass through. Now, this rigorous training is further to confirm God's presence in the life of his children. This rigorous training is not meant as uh, a kind of a message that informs us that God is against us. The people are very afraid of this and we've seen people not giving out this message and we have, have a lot of them in the scriptures that we've not been hearing i trust in the holy spirit this morning to help us understand what it is, what it is. this is all about the militariness of god's training now what is training the question is what is training it is the action of teaching a person particularly skills or behavioral type now we're talking about that secular meaning that's dictionary meaning now let's look at it in the aspect of the uh, scripture in the, uh, in the spiritual aspect uh, spiritually we talk about training to be likened to the action of God right that God carries out in a believer 
to allow him to yield the fruits of his Holy Spirit. I'm going to come, come again on that. Spiritually, uh, training is likened to uh, God's action. Carrying out, carrying upon all his children. Being carried upon all his children to allow them to yield the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The word is military. The military relates to armed forces of a nation. A military relates to or characterizes by soldiers and forces. And we're going to clear that out in the scripture. Where do I got the word military from? We're talking about a reference to soldiers. The military is an uh, abstract now covering anything related to soldier hallelujah praise the lord are you here with me so when you i'm saying praise the lord if you can mute my mic immediately and respond so that we can hear you here that would be very great hallelujah praise the lord Amen. Hallelujah. all right so second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 now listen carefully he said the weapon of our warfare are not canna but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, First Peter chapter four, verse thirteen. First Peter chapter four, verse thirteen. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be also glad with exceeding joy. Now, from what I read earlier, praise the Lord. Uh, David talks a lot about, um, uh, okay, this is where we go. When I say, when I call, you quickly unmute your mic and respond. And when I'm talking along, you close your mic. So it's going to be a lot. Hallelujah. Yeah. So look at the book of Psalm 144, verse 1 and 2. It says, Blessed are the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands. For war and my fingers for battle that's where you can see a militariness of god there why is god training uh, uh david's finger for battle right so we can also confirm that uh, from the scripture too uh about the reference about we being soldiers of christ Rather, as places in the scripture where we are told we are the soldiers of the army of the body of Christ. And then this point finger directly to us that God is interested in training all his children. And when he trains them, he trains them in a very hard way. Hallelujah. Not to injure them or to make them fail, but he wants to make them strong hallelujah he wants them to have a semblance mm -hmm. of him and he has many agenda in his mind when he's doing that today we want to really focus uh carefully on and uh, how and why god's militariness in training the hours and 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 the why hallelujah i'm going to start very straightforward without wasting time Number one, God introduces enemies on the ways of his children to equip them to be combat ready to handling spiritual weapon of warfare against the enemies. I'm going to repeat that again so that we can hear it carefully. God introduces enemy on our ways. To equip us combat skill ready to be able to handle spiritual weapon of warfare against our enemies. Now I'm going to give an example here. We see an example of how God allowed David deliberately to be invited to the palace. Despite the fact that God saw that Saul is against him. God understood that the uh, Saul is no longer somebody 
with him. And if I were told that the evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul, one began to wonder why would God allow David to be invited to the palace? Hallelujah. I would think that God will prepare a table mm -hmm. for the anointed of God somewhere else where we will not be tortured or be uh, tormented or be, uh, be confronted with the forces of the enemy. But God did not. But it deliberately brought him to the presence of somebody who is against him. I'm going to confirm that with you in the book of First Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 to 19 first Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 to 19 but the spirit of the lord departed from saul and a distressing spirit from the lord troubled him verse 15 and saul's servant said to him surely a distressing spirit from god is troubling you verse 16 let our master now command your servant who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp and it shall be that he will play it with his hands and when the distressing spirit from god is upon you you shall be well verse 17 so saul said to his servants provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me verse 18 then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. A mighty man of the law, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. Now mark the word. The Lord is with David. Hallelujah. God understands the whole thing. David was well prepared by God. And God knows that he's with him. He's been with him when he was in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. God has been with him in all that he does. But why this invitation to a dangerous palace? Because why? Because God wants to give him another level of training to be able to equip him on how to handle adversary on how to use spiritual warp, uh, weapon to get the enemy arrested and some of us today will have wondered why are we going through stuff each time you get to a town and you rent an apartment you're always going to find somebody in that apartment <laughs> at least one person who is just hating you for no reason they are just there to Prepare by God for the purpose of strengthening you. There's no need for you to get overwhelmed because it's a part of, of God military training. How can you be a winner when you don't fight any battle? How can you be able to encourage others in the future when you have not gone through the embattlement with adversary of God? So God decided to get so ready and he invited through the servant of Saul, David, into the dangerous palace. And of course, we know what came afterwards. Hallelujah. We saw how Saul was completely against David. He saw him as a competitor. Even though it was initial goal was to come and relieve him of the evil spirit that came from the Lord. But the man at last began to see him as an opposition. And he began to fight all he could. In fact, he pursued Saul right from the palace, from his palace. I mean, he pursued David right from his palace all the way to the wilderness. Right in the midst of rocky mountains. Wanting to get somebody he personally invited. To get to him and destroy him. Hallelujah. And God was there watching the whole thing. That is God's militariness in training for you. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to tell you that whatever you are going through is just for a little while. Because God's plan is greater than what you are thinking. There's no need for you to be afraid because you are going to encounter serious and dangerous situations. 
the situation you, you, you personally cannot explain, you begin to ask yourself questions. Why am I going through this in summer? Why is all this befalling me? Why am I having my house about to be set on fire ablaze? Have I not been praying? Why are all these things happening? It is because God wants to equip you ready for certain capability in life to be able to stand firm, to know how to handle a spiritual weapon against your enemy. Uh, God doesn't want to prepare children who are very weak in battle. He said, when you are weak, when you are supposed in the time of adversary, he said, your strength is small. All right? When God is preparing people to be able to undo, to be able to take care of the future enemy against God's people, when you stand as a counselor, when you stand as a future pastor, when you stand as a future elder in the future, when you stand in your business as a, as a coordinator, as a leader in the future, those things won't get you afraid because you've already gone through them. And David saw that. And was always th what we saw about David is that David never argued. He went through the training. Look at, let, let, me, let me tell you carefully. David was very anointed. And he was not ignorant of the anointing. Amen. Everybody said, not ignorant. David was not ignorant of, not the ignorant of the anointing of God placed over him. Hallelujah. As some of us we told today, we cannot be subservient uh, to ignorance. All right. David was very conscious. And that's why I'm saying sometime one of these days, I'm going to have to I mean, talk with you on the management of the anointing. David was highly anointed, but yet, hallelujah, he knew how to listen to God. He knew that even if they were taken to a wilderness of trouble, he still have to stand still and trust God's presence. He was able to understand that his presence in the palace is not meant for evil. As some of us today will think that the place God is putting us is because God wants evil for us. And sometimes we try all we can. But nothing is happening. The enemy won't get from, the, from that location. The enemy will rather get closer. The more we say, God, take this enemy away. The more the enemy get closer. The more the enemy set up all things against us. Let me tell you something. God has a bigger plan than what you are thinking about. God has a secret that he cannot reveal to many. God will make a promise. But the process of achieving the, this promise, it doesn't reveal to any man. God also does not reveal to any man the timing. God does things in the way he pleases. But what is important here is that God wants to train you ready. Battle ready. Battle skill ready to be able to confront the enemy with a spiritual weapon of warfare as he did for David. We also see the example of Joseph via his boldness and fearlessness of Joseph. God stirred up Personally, God personally stirred up enemy from him, from his own household. Hallelujah. Temporary enemy. You see, God wouldn't let him keep his mouth shut. Hallelujah. And sometimes to, sometime today, innocently, you've, you've, you say it's a mistake. You share your vision with people. And they eventually turn to be against you. This is an example of it. And in fact, it's not just people. They are actually people from his own household. The people that are very close to Joseph. These are the ones that turn to be temporary enemy towards him. You can see that in the book of Genesis chapter 37. You read from the whole chapter. And then he was able, he was able to undo Potiphar. You can see that also uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 39 from 1 to 11. How the training he got from his family turning to be a temporary enemy against him, Joseph. And he got that training, and he used that training. God has a way of helping you to use the initial training given to you to be able to encounter the future training. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he used the future training to be able to encounter the future, future training. God has a way of preparing you ready. See, due to his experience that he already got in with his family, family members, they touch on the turn into enemy, to, to be enemy. And we are told in the scripture, they said the brothers hated him the more. The more he shared his vision. They hated him. They didn't stop there. They actually plot to kill him. Hallelujah. And then eventually, through their, 
through their uh, their deal with one another they, they, they sold him up to the land of slavery into Potiphar's house and in the Potiphar's house too we can see the encounter Joseph had with the wife of Potiphar hallelujah you can see how Potiphar's wife want to implicate him but Joseph immediately understood that if if my household were against me initially and I was able to get here God saved me too the God that saved me, that trained me, that gave me the courage and patience, that trained me, is able to get me out of this. And that's why the wisdom to be able to handle Potiphar's wife also came upon him. Hallelujah. He did not give himself up to the devil, even during this training. He submitted himself to God. And he was taken to the prison. And you can also see in the prison too, that he was actually praying his mind. To the extent that he voiced out to one of the prisoners who was supposed to go and interpret that uh, he was supposed to go and interpret the dream i mean the dream he had he was supposed to be uh, he had a dream in the in the prison and he was interpreting the dream from him for him and after interpreting the dream for him and joseph requested he said, when you get to the king, when your day of deliverance by your dream came, comes around, please do not forget me. And we are told in the scripture that he was forgotten. Hallelujah. The prayer of, <laughs> of Joseph was not answered. We're going to talk, let's look at the book of um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came to send peace, but not I, I came not to send peace, but a sword. 35. For I am come to set a man in variance against his father, and the daughter against his mother, and the daughter in law against his mother in law. Verse 36. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Look at that. We saw that manifested in the, life of uh, in the life of Joseph. Christ came and emphasized that. Now, let me tell you today, you might have your family member turning against you as a temporary enemy because of the way you think. Your thinking faculty in the family is kind of different from others. Remember, I was told that Katikuma was kind of a hard person in the family. It was not seeing somebody uh, as somebody who may have, who may, who may have future. But eventually, it turned out to be a great woman of God. Let me tell you something today. You might be going through some stuff in your life. Some dangerous stuff that you cannot consume. You can't understand why your own family people are turning again. Even your own mother. And say, pack out of my house. I don't want to see you anymore. I'm done with you, God. I'm already done with you. You are having yourself in a standing low situation. Where we don't have help from the east. You don't have help from the south. You don't have help anywhere. But you are seeing yourself overwhelmed with loneliness. God has a plan. Hallelujah. God has a plan. No matter what the enemy has set up to put you down today, this word as you hear today, God is going to come to your aid and strengthen you in the midst of your training. Amen. Hallelujah. Just Amen. calm down today because God is going to load you up with this word. Your orientation will change. Your thinking faculty from today after this message will change completely. Hallelujah. You're going to learn on how to be patient with God. You're going to learn on how to allow God to walk through you. Hallelujah. It's a walk, God that mm -hmm. walks in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Listen carefully. But God is about to do something new you have never heard of in your life. In you. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Now listen carefully. So we were told that 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's Jesus speaking. Hallelujah. He didn't say well, automatically uh, you are just going to be turned enemy against your people. No, that's not what he's trying to say. But training may require that you have a temporary separation. Hallelujah. Because you must be brought out of your comfortable sitting location to a situation where your hand can be well trained. There's some discomfort that might be start happening in your home. And you begin to ask why? Why? There's some people today, they just get angry. 
and they turn against their father because they don't understand the training of God. They turn against their mom because they don't understand the training of God. That's what God does. He has a way. In fact, sometimes God can use some people's husband or wife as a trainer for them. God will deliberately make them trainee where we make their wife a trainer or make make her the wife trainee. I mean, uh, uh, make the wife a trainee. I made the husband a trainer. And you begin to, and maybe you are beginning to wonder, why am I going through this? Why is this man like that? Why is this man so severe? Why is he so stringent on me? Why is he so, see, but because it is the finger of God that that happens. Because if that does not happen, you won't be able to get to where God wants to, want you to get to. You won't be able to get sufficient training to be able to get to where you want to get to. You have a friend, you are sharing room together. And then it turns out that this friend doesn't just like anything you do. You never did anything wrong. If you go to the kitchen, it will look at you, it will complain. If you, <laughs> if you cook, it will say your food is not okay. If you sleep, it will say you are, you are just disturbing. If you watch TV, you are disturbing. Everything you do is a conflict towards, towards your friend. Now, let me tell you carefully, God is, what is, God is wanting to build a situation into you that you can be able to manage people. Hallelujah. That you'll be able to manage people in the future. Because this must come. Hallelujah. This must come. Hallelujah. It's not because God is uh, against you. That's why your brother and sisters, your friend, are hating you. Hallelujah. Because of God's military training. Number two. Why is God military in his training? Number two. God introduces hurdles in order to want to build endurance or forbearance uh, forbearance is the high level of patience that's the fruit of the spirit forbearance is a very high level of patience and sometimes you have all do's in your life <laughs> unexplainable how do that people when you share with people people begin to wonder can this one be christian how can it be going through this hallelujah in fact some people want to make you they want to they want make you push yourself against god Hallelujah. We saw the example like that in the case of Job. Amen. Job went through a lot of things. Hallelujah. In fact, his own wife was trying to push him. Right? Even his friend wanted to encourage him to turn his back against God. But Job understood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Job understood I'm under the tutelage and covering of God. There's no need for me to escape this training hallelujah god has a purpose a reason why it does things you got to stand still where you are and never give up amen second Corinthians chapter one verses second Corinthians chapter one verse six and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we we also suffer or whether be comforted whether we be comforted is for your consolation and salvation you can see the experience of apostle paul here talking about endurance see forbearance the high level of patience god has a way of using affliction hordus amen <laughs> across your way uh, such that you won't be able to to understand what's going on you just put it across your way. It just block you here, left and right. You want to go this way, you can go. You want to go that way, you can go. You got to find yourself having to relax, okay, and and and, and sub, be subdued, even in the presence of people you call friends, people you call. But inner God is actually using them to help you out. Hallelujah! You see yourself yeah. being handicapped in in carrying out things. I mean, like, what is going on? I tried this. It doesn't work. I pray. What? Nothing's happening. Amen. You put one effort. You want your GPA up and it doesn't go up. You put another effort. Sleepless night. You do all you can do. Hallelujah. You sat down. You mm. cry. You work so hard. Hallelujah. The more you work, the less income is coming. Ha. God has a purpose for you. Amen. He has a purpose uh, for you. It's engaging you in a training that no man can explain. It's a training that belongs to that belongs to that come from him and belongs to you. 
and it is personal between you and him so why would you want to give up in this training relax stay where you are and and, and let your endurance and let your pers forbearance perseverance be built up by god's militariness in training hallelujah number three why is god why is god military in his training number three god introduces tribulation on our paths in order to build kindness into us to be ready to comfort others hallelujah uh, the kindness is the fruit of the holy spirit but the fruit of the holy spirit doesn't come just like that without god making us to pass through some stuff where the holy ghost himself will be able to work out the work out things in us to produce that fruit hallelujah so tribulation sometimes will come oh you know, it's not about uh christian it's not about that's why people get confused after being born again a christian and they begin to face face a lot of stuff in life that they cannot explain difficult moment in life uh, and they are just very confused and the more they serve the lord the more things become difficult you know people are actually found out that the more you pray i mean personally let me just explain to you here the more you pray when you want to pray when you keep praying that's the first phase of praying that's a discouragement when you start initially that's an initial discouragement right and then when you go to another level there's another high level of discouragement and another level we call it a breakthrough level amen and a breakthrough level is where you begin to interact with god easily at any time anywhere in the kitchen when you're watching tv it's easy prayer becomes a star hallelujah you enjoy it but people don't understand the secret they give up when when they pray a little and the problem is multiplied hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah when god wants to train you he will allow you to pray and then you are asking god against a particular problem by the time you finish your prayer god multiplies the problem again <laughs> why is god doing that he wants to train you to enduring hallelujah he said he knows that you're going to come again to him and come and pray and you begin to pray the, the, the more deeper the more deeper i mean the deeper you are digging the closer you are getting and the more is bringing forbearance out of you hallelujah the more is able to produce Amen. produce kindness out of you hallelujah so god has a way of doing all these things and in fact i'm able to get a little bit of a little bit of explanation from him i know for sure that he will explain better in your heart than i explained today but what is very important is this lies that god is very interested in training you hallelujah and there's nothing we can do about uh. it. nothing in this world that we can do about this these must come hallelujah because god is not just teaching you god is not just <laughs> allow you to come to his kingdom and be useless god wants to use you as his own battle haze if i look at the situation in the book of jeremiah it was telling jeremiah i said you are my you are my battle eggs okay so you should understand that that you are my battle axe. you should understand that and if he doesn't understand that god said it's going to make him be dismayed before the people so god really wants us to be conscious of the fact that we are instrument in his hand to achieve his goal on the surface of the earth and so therefore it must bring tribulation into us to shake us to be able to get us ready to be useful instrument in his kingdom actually to build kindness out of us hallelujah and let's look at this second Corinthians uh, chapter one verse four second Corinthians chapter one verse four who comforts us in all tribulation you can see the comfort the comfort comes from the holy spirit even though you are going through that tribulation that we may be able to comfort them hallelujah as god is getting us through that tribulation he also introduces his comfort mechanism so that we can get understanding we can get equipped in that comfort ability the skill to comfort people and at the same time we're able to go out to comfort others 
who are in distress. Hallelujah. By the comfort we are with, we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, number four. Why? Why is God very military in training? All this is not just looking at the Bible and just crafting a message. This message is come through prayers, talking to God, and God Himself helping me to go through some stuff in life, and He has made him, made me to have this particular time to speak with this with you. You take it very serious. This is not a uh, uh, evangelistic message. It is simple a message to reflect on. That will be very important and vital for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. This will determine whatever you are going to have in your future. This is a way out to achieving your goal and destiny in life. So that you don't become a baby Christian for life who, doesn't, who is not patient enough to wait. That's also a part of what we call partaking of Christ's suffering in Christianity. That's why Christianity is kind of, to the unbelief, it is very complex. To the unbelief. Hallelujah. But to the man who has faith, who is submissive to the Holy Spirit, it is very simple. Hallelujah. Very, very simple. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 40. Okay. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 40, verse 14 to 15. Hallelujah. Number four. Talking about God will sometimes suspend response to prayers in difficult moments. What are those prayers about? Particularly those prayers that have been asking God for fulfillment of his promises. Because God changes his mind. For a bigger plan for you. Having built faithfulness into you through his deliberate lane. Alright, let me read, let me repeat that again. God suspend response to prayer in difficult moment. Why did he do that? He wanted to wait a little bit moment to go through training to build our faithfulness out of you, and then God will now change his mind to give you a bigger plan. And if you fail the training, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> what, what might happen it might just be God giving you cookies. Just enjoy your cookies and let me go. Hallelujah. But God, you'll be asking God for a big thing. You promised me this and that. And God decided, say, I'm not going to answer this prayer. Why? Because if you can go through this training I want to go take you through, I'm going to have to fulfill a bigger plan than initial plan. God has a right to change his mind. Hallelujah. That's why it is sovereign. The sovereignty of God cannot be competed with. You might think that is the way what you pray about. And God told you, you are going to have that house. And then after years come, you, wrote, you even wrote that promises down. That is also year you are going to have this, this house already being built by you. But you discover that after that year, there was no house, no money <laughs> coming in. You don't have financially, not financially strong enough to be able to have that house. Hallelujah. And then afterwards, <laughs> you went through all the stuff and then you discover later that even the house you were waiting for, the one you now had later, was actually even bigger. Amen. Than what you were thinking about. These are all the things God do. God has a right to change his mind because he has a bigger plan for you. Because he must take you to a training of faithfulness. Hallelujah. Now, in chapter 40, verse 14 to 15. But remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness to me. That's Joseph in the prison talking to the man he interpreted dream to. All right. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Verse 15. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. That's how some of us today are complaining. We complain to people the difficulty we are going through, the pain, the suffering. Nobody is going to help us. There's no help of destiny. People will look forward to to help us through. Couldn't help us. Amen. That might be God's finger. Hallelujah. God might ask his own plan of time and a bigger thing that he wants to accomplish. But look at what Joseph, uh, Joseph is thinking about here. If you look at the way he's talking here, you can 
think you can see clearly that he was talking like a man who is almost giving up amen he said remember me hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord because i always think about it's almost like the dream he had was given it's a very mighty dream but look at the situation he went through it's like at this stage he said, well just remember me so that i can be set free from here he is advocating praying to god that he voiced out to the one he interpreted the dream to pray to god that just god just release me out of this prison and god is saying no that's not what i want for you and what happened in verse 23 yet the chief butler did not remember joseph but forgot him hallelujah before pharaoh because god has a plan for him a greater thing for him to achieve well different from what he was thinking thinking about just getting freedom from prison because he said, look i'm the man that gave you vision if i give you a dream i have a bigger plan than what you are thinking right now and i'm going to bring my own big vision to pass so you are going through stuff in your life my brothers and sisters and you begin to see that oh all this you have been asking god i want great home i want a husband i want a wife i want this this level of academics i want breakthroughs financially i want my home to be turned around i want and god seems not to be responding to that it's not because god hates you because god must train you militarily getting ready to be able to endure difficult moments hallelujah to build faithfulness out of you hallelujah god will take you to the path of that and eventually when god realizes those things for you you will never forget about faithfulness to god when you can stay and stand still and walk with god you are going to receive that fruit of faithfulness in any way in life in any way in life you can stand and say to people i know that god is always faithful nobody can be talking about faithfulness of god if god has not even take you through that faithfulness and demonstrate that in your own pattern of life hallelujah so you can talk about god's faithfulness because god did that make you went through that hallelujah number five why is god military in his training because god wants to build in you a self-discipline able to undo distractions a self-discipline able to undo distraction you become a big person in the future you become a, 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 a great man in the future and it cannot be disciplined very you know it, it's easier to climb to the top all right okay so the thing is praise the lord then when you get there to be able to maintain it it is more difficult all right easier to get there but to maintain staying there that's the most difficult thing and that's why god is trying to help your help us about that even if i allow you now to rise high are you be able to are you able to stay there and, and keep my statutes and accomplish my purposes for which i've designed placing you there so if you are having a situation right now that you are seeing that things are getting delayed it's because probably <laughs> god is not yet able to craft discipline out of your life amen if you can submit today god will be ready to help you out hallelujah second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of jesus christ verse 4 no one engage in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier it's impossible to please god without without having a self-discipline hallelujah so god doesn't want us to be carried away by the affairs of this life and the book of first john chapter 2 verse 15 to 16 said love not the world and the things there in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all the things that is in the world the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but of the world we had a story about of, of a man who won a big lottery he got millions of dollars 
and then after about one or two years the man was rendered bankrupt his account turned red why because he did not know how to manage the wealth the riches that was delivered unto him again i tell you it can be easier to get an appointment now if you maintain that appointment and stay firm and manage that position in a way that will fulfill the purpose of god that is a big deal and that's why god must train you militarily you say when you are training military people you are not you are creating artificial problem for them it's like you create a problem and give them answer i mean uh, sheet sheets hallelujah you give them answer key that's what they do you know if you have gone to a military camp they create all those around they dig holes so that the military will go through all those stuff and eventually if they're able to go through all those stuff and they they, they regularize them uh, the, for the commitment to the work for which they have been called and today god wants to regularize you all those things you thought have gone so far delay in your life they are about to be accomplished but god is waiting whether you can take his discipline whether you can take his training god wants to bring discipline out of you rise up on your feet this morning whatever disappointment you are going through in your life don't worry see people easily give up on god <laughs> when they get to campus right they can't see uh what their father have been talking about god they couldn't see it easily their gpa is falling and then some issues are coming financial issues and all stuff they get all disappointed uh, here and there and instead of them to wait because god might be using those things to get them up you when, when are we going to get up and become really adults are we going to remain uh, kids like the galatians want to feed on just milk wouldn't want to crack bones god want to train us to be bone crack crackers god want to train us to be strong in battle god want to train us to beat our hand to battle rise up this morning i begin to ask god god i'm ready to take your training whatever it is i will take it i will take it all my disappointed today i realized clearly I realize clearly unmute your mic and speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. God will not let you go. Let me tell you, wherever you go, it doesn't matter. You are still going to get those training. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever motivational speech you might have had in your life, it doesn't matter. You are still going to go through this. Speak to God. I'm ready. Total submission to God is what take a man to achieving his goal. In in, in, in in God's kingdom. Total submission to God is what gets a man a total fulfillment in life. We saw that in the life of David. We saw that in the life of Joseph. We saw that in the life of Paul. We saw that in the life of the disciples. So what should we say we have? Who are we not to go to do, through the training of God? When God tried to pass across his training, it's not to do wickedness to us, but to equip us ready. For the encounter in the future is to make us think and please on the surface of the earth. A, sol a, a problem solver, a solution giver. Open your mouth and say, Lord, today I'm ready for your training. Whatever, however military it is, I'm ready. Oh Lord, help me, Lord, to teach my hand to war and my finger to fire and the bar of steel be broken by my hand. Mighty God of heaven, I am ready today, whatever it is, oh Lord, to keep go in your line to keep going without giving up in your life father let me not give up whatever it is i'm ready i'm ready whatever plan you have for me today bring them to pass by your whole way lord i refuse to coerce you i accept i agree with you to get your purpose fulfilled in my life lord today i understand that you can be very militant you are a militant god you are a consuming fire you are ready to burn every shadow of me but you must take me through some serious training i am ready to go with your training i am ready not to give up help me lord father to keep my feet and not be complaining and not be freaking out with little things that happens around me mighty god today i understand as you do the the the, the, the heart of solomon we are told in the scripture you enlarge his heart oh lord today i'm ready to go through this training for my life for my heart to be enlarged to bear fruits 
until my foot can remain. I know you are pruning me. I know you are pruning me to be able to be my foot. Help me, O oh Lord, to stand and, and engage your pruning so that I can achieve the goal for which you are doing all this training. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Also, mighty God, today you have given a word that comes from you by yourself, from you by yourself, from you by yourself. I ask you to spread your word into the ears of every era today. I pray that your purposes and plan for your children will they be achieved. I pray for grace for them to receive, for them to accept total surrender, to allow you to go through them to work this out in them be given thank you father we give you all the praise and anyone today watching that online and kept crying say i don't know this is the way it is to be a christian i pray your spiritual eyes of understanding be enlightened by god now god that was with joseph when he was passing through those situations god that was with david yeah, even though I like, even though, <laughs> even though I pass through the shadow of darkness, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. The God that was with David will be with you. You will be prosperous despite your challenges. This week, you will encounter a sincere envelope of God. God will give you a special gift to this week, this this week to confirm your His presence with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have all declared. Hallelujah. Thank you.